Hey everybody, hope you're having an awesome day. Before we get started with today's video, I want to thank everybody. We have reached 17,500 subscribers on the channel. This is unreal. Thank you guys so much. And I do want to remind everybody that you can become a member to the channel for only 99 cents. Beginning January 1st, 2023, the MVP, VIP, and Pro levels of membership will be gone, and all the perks that go along with them will all go to the eBuzz Central member for just 99 cents. It's a great way to support the channel you like and, of course, the content you like. So let me close out of that. Today I'm going to look at a distribution I haven't seen since January of this year, so it's been a little over 10 months since I covered it, and that would be Reborn OS. It is an arch spin that I think is probably one of the cleanest arch spins that are out there and one of the ways to really easily get into arch if you have never tried it before. You can come to their website, which is rebornos.org. I'll be sure to put that link in the description below. And you've got download or more info, but what we're going to do real quick is we're going to go ahead and scroll down and it lets you know right here why Reborn OS, desktop and window managers. That's one of the first things they want to show. So I'm going to go ahead and view showcase. And when you come over to the showcase, it lets you know that it is available in KDE Plasma. Then you can scroll over. It's got Gnome, Deepen, Cinnamon, Cutefish, UKUI. It's, that's a simple desktop environment. I've played with it a little bit, but I do want to cover it in an upcoming video. LXQT, XFCE, which when you download it is the standard desktop environment. And then when you install, you can choose what desktop you want to use. Mate, LXDE, Budgie, Enlightenment, Openbox, i3, and then it comes back to KDE Plasma. So you have a lot of different desktops you can utilize with this operating system, which I think is really great. And then down here, you've got latest posts. What I'm gonna do is go right back to where we were. It talks about their global community. You can join the community, endlessly customizable. You can select what software you want to use, what kernel you want to use, what desktop or window manager, and then it's always up to date because it is Arch-based. It is a rolling release, and you're always going to have the freshest packages that go along with Arch. And then if you come up to the top, you've got info, news, community, and donate. Now, if you click on download... It'll bring you over here. This is the latest ISO. And then they do have Reborn OS on ARM. And then you also have download mirrors down here that you can look at. And then frequently asked questions, installation guide, minimum system requirements. So it's a pretty comprehensive website. So I suggest if you go to take a look at it, kind of dig into the website and look at all the info that is available. Now, what we're looking at today is a version that was released on November 13th. So it's a little over two weeks old. And without any further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and get on over to the desktop. So if you download Reborn OS, throw it on a USB, or maybe open it up into a virtual machine, this is the screen you're going to be met with. Now, you do have the Reborn OS installer, and you've got two options here. Install online or install offline. Now, if you install it offline, you're going to be given the option to keep the XFC desktop environment. And then if you install it online, it's going to give you the ability to download whatever window manager or desktop environment you would like to use. That's what was covered earlier on the website that we just looked at. And then, of course, you've got links, utilities, about and close. And then you've got your console right here that lets you know what's going on in the background as you do your install, if you want to keep an eye on that. So if you installed online, you would just click on that and it would bring up the familiar Calamari's installer. Now, because I am in a virtual machine, you know it's going to say, hey, you're connected to the internet, not enough disk space, it's not plugged in, running the installer as administrator. But if you come over here and look at your options, let's go ahead and maximize this so you can kind of see it a little better. Welcome, location, keyboard, desktops, and window managers, advanced, partitions, users, summary, install, and finish. So if you do want to install this, it gives you quite a few options right there. Now, if you do like XFCE, just go ahead and install it with the offline tool. But if you want something like a KDE Plasma or maybe a Budgie or maybe you want to give Reborn OS with the deep and desktop environment a shot, go ahead with the online mode and then you can select it over here with desktops and window managers. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Yes, we do want to close. And let's go ahead and close that tool right there. And then you just come to the standard desktop. Now, if you right click on the desktop, because it is XFCE, 
you get quite a few options right here. You got create launcher, create URL link, create folder, open terminal. Matter of fact, let's do open a terminal. Let's see if it's got NeoFetch out of the box. And it does. Let's go ahead and maximize that. Let's go ahead and make it a little bigger so you can see it. And it shows that it's Reborn OS Linux, VirtualBox, kernel 6.0.8-arch1-1. So it does come with the Arch kernel, so it is more of a spin of Arch as opposed to a distribution. Shows that we've been up three minutes packages. We have 901. Got the ZSH shell, and then XFCE4, 4.16.1, and then XF Window Manager 4. And it's running X11. Shows that I'm on an AMD Ryzen 5. And that pretty much gives you the information of what we're dealing with here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and close out of that. We do know what's going on there. We will check resources here in just a little bit. But we want to come down to the bottom. You've got a bottom panel down here. You've got show desktop. You've got your date and time. Sound, notifications, how much of your batteries left, internet. And then, of course, we have updates. And then right here was the installer that just popped up a while ago. It's minimized down here now. We don't need it, so I'm going to keep going. You have Gparted, and let's go ahead and open that terminal back up. Let's go ahead and maximize it, and let's go ahead and see if they have HTOP. They don't, so we will go ahead and go with TOP. Now, when TOP comes up, that'll give us an idea of what kind of resources we're using. Out of the three gigs I have issued to it, with just the terminal open, we're using about 518 megabytes, which is pretty light. It's about 300 lighter than what you would be setting with a KDE or maybe a GNOME desktop environment. They're running about 850, at rest, so it's pretty lightweight. I have seen some that run down in the three and 400s, but for it being Arch, a rolling release, you're only using about a half a gig to be open. I don't think that's a problem at all. If you disagree with me, put something down in the comments below. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this right here. Yes, we want to close the window. We got file manager. This should be Thunar file manager. Let's go ahead and maximize that. Go help and about. And it is Thunar 4.16.11. Now, Thunar is a little less feature rich than, let's say, like a dolphin. Uh, but it's plenty to get your job done and get the work done that you need to do. You've got your usual suspects over here. And then, of course, your home folders right here. It's just a lightweight file manager that stays out of your way and lets you get things done. And of course, you've got Firefox out of the box as your primary web browser. Let's go ahead and open up the app menu. And we will go up here to all applications just so we can kind of see them all. You've got about XFCE accessibility. You've got add and remove software. So let's look at how we're going to add software to this OS. And if you're familiar with PayMac, you're going to be right at home right here because that's what you're looking at. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do, especially if you install this, is you're going to want to come up here to the triple dots Go ahead and open that up and come down to Preferences. Go ahead and click on that and go to Third Party. Now, if you're somebody that's been using Arch, you're going to want to enable the AUR. Now, if you're somebody that's leaving Manjaro and coming over to Reborn, you're going to have a little bit better feel and obviously a better experience using the AUR inside of Reborn for the simple fact that it doesn't hold packages back. You're going to get most up-to-date in the system, so you're going to have a lot less breaks that you're used to having when you're in something like a Manjaro. So you're going to want to enable this. And then what you, another thing you're going to want to do is go over here and go ahead and check for updates. Keep that clicked. So that way, if there's an update in the AUR, it will pop up and let you know that you need to update an AUR package that you're using. And then come over here to General and just kind of look, and everything looks good there, and then close. And this is pretty self-explanatory. You could come up here. You just type in what you're looking for. So let's say we're looking for something like Caden Live. Just click on it. It'll pop up right here. It shows you official repository. You just click download right here, and it'll say one pending operation. Now, if I were to click apply, it would pop up and say these dependencies need to go along with it. You click OK, and then it would install it on your system. Now, if you want to, you could go through here and pick everything that you wanted to download. Caden Live, GIMP, Shotcut, whatever, just make your big list. But I sometimes, unless it's a tool that actually comes with the operating system, I usually just download one package at a time. That, so that way I can kind of see if there is an issue, what package I'm having an issue with. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Let's come back down here. You got Add and Remove, Appearance, Color Profiles, Default Applications, Your Desktop, Disk Usage, Analyzer, Interface Designer, Mouse and Touchpad, 
Partition Editor, Power Manager, Reborn OS Fire, Reborn OS Kernel Manager. This is where you would go in and change a kernel if you wanted to. Offline Installer, Online Installer, Refresh Mirrors. You've got your System Profiler, Task Manager, Text Editor. You've got two web browsers, and you got your Window Manager, and then your Window Manager Tweaks. If you wanted to make some changes, you could open that up and come over here. How they cycle, focus, accessibility, workspaces, placement, compositor. There's just a lot of tools here that you can use. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And another thing, I want to right click and let's go to desktop settings. And let's see what kind of wallpapers you get. Well, you only get two wallpapers out of the box. This is prior to install. So maybe you get some more after install. But if you have a folder that's already got your wallpapers in it, you're probably not too worried about that. But I do want to look at a different wallpaper just to look. And I actually kind of like that one a little better. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And I really like the way that looks. Reborn OS, newest release, looks really nice. Comes with the true Arch kernel, so you're getting a good spin of Arch. You've got a lot of possibilities with the different desktops that you can use with this operating system. I think if you're somebody that wants to give Arch a try, or maybe you're already using Arch and are bored with what you already have, maybe give Reborn OS a shot. It's nice. I have a lot of people that pop up in my comments that use it and love it. I really think it would be worth your time to zip on over, download it, throw it on a USB, and take it for a test drive. Is that something you might do? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else and subscribe. Doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey, and you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only 99 cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99, and on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.